Hey guys, um, you might have noticed that I unlisted my recent video on rotoscoping. As of right now, I feel compelled to keep it uh, down or hidden and to instead replace it with a very clear message. And that clear message is that it is not okay to rotoscope animations, other people's animations. And uh, that's what this video is about. Just uh, don't do it. So I received a lot of really good comments in the video of people who clearly understood what I was trying to say, the nuances of my point of view. The problem with the video is that someone could watch the video and misunderstand the point, the message of the video they could watch the video to halfway through or three quarters of the way through, not watch the full thing and then walk away from the video thinking the wrong message or getting the wrong message from the video. It could just take away like one sentence idea from the video, which would be like, Howard says it's okay to rotoscope, full stop, <laughs> you know? Oh, so then it must be okay to rotoscope other people's animation, right? You never know, like someone could interpret it like that. They could just take home a very short message instead of the the actual substance. Like it's a 20 minute video. Um, so it details quite a nuanced point of view. And frankly, I just don't trust that everyone watching it would pay attention to the full video. And so, I'm gonna get into why that is a real concern for me. Here I'm gonna play some of the clips from the original video and in the editing, I should have put this clip at the start because it's probably the most important thing in the video. I do not rotoscope over animation ever because then there's a chance that I would accidentally copy something and I don't want to copy anything. I want to make sure that it all comes through my head and onto the screen that way. It has to go through my head first. I have to process it internally before making it instead of doing something like tracing. Regrettably, I am going to go back on one thing that I said in the video. The thing that I said in the video was that it's there should be no rules on the process, but considering the audience that I have here, I'm gonna go back on that and I'm gonna make a rule. And that rule is that it is not okay to rotoscope other people's animation. It's better if you never rotoscope other people's animation, just don't do it. If you rotoscope someone else's animation and you release it under your own name, as your own, that is theft. Like, plain and simple, theft, illegal. Not cool. I forgot who I was talking to when I was writing this video. Um, I wanted to write the video for experts in animation, to advanced technicians, film theorists, and experienced innovators who have a command over animation already. They understand how to make animation. People who can potentially experiment with new technology and ideas in a responsible and controlled way. But in reality, the people who watch my videos the most, they're not experienced. They don't have control over, the, over their animation process. They're beginners. Like some of them are asking what animation software they should use in that video. Like they literally comment, great video, by the way, what animation software should I use? And it matters very much who is listening. Telling a film theorist or an advanced technician a seasoned expert telling them that the process and the sources are fair game, that can lead to some amazing innovations in animation. But if you tell the same thing to a beginner who's just gotten started with animation, if you tell them that it's totally fine to use anything, any source, that can lead to them tracing over frames of Yutaka Nakamura or uh, rotoscoping some Disney animation and that can have disastrous consequences. Let me tell you what will happen if you rotoscope over someone else's animation and try to pass it off as your own, release it under your own name. Let me tell you what's going to happen. 
if it catches the attention of the copyright owners, you could be taken to court and you could be sued for a massive fine. That is a possibility. But the more likely thing to happen and the worst thing to happen will be that you will become blacklisted forever, permanently. You will forever be known as the art thief. Uh, no one will employ you, no one will want to employ you because they won't be able to trust if you have stolen something. And just like that, you have ended your career in animation before it even started. You could be 13 years old when it happened. You could be, you could be a 13 year old boy just getting into animation for the first time, boy or girl, just getting into animation for the first time, experiment with rotoscoping, rip someone else off and post it online and that can be the end of your career, you know? Um, time to retrain, time to choose another profession because you're blacklisted now. And it doesn't matter that you're 13 years old, no one can tell on the internet, no one can tell that you are young or old, age is not a thing that's attached to your profile particularly. No one's gonna even be able to say, oh well they're young, they don't know what they're doing. And if you're coming into this for the first time, you know, as a beginner, you probably wouldn't be aware even that you're doing anything wrong. And then just like that, your career could be snuffed out. So um, that concerns me very much. It concerns me that that could happen to someone and it concerns me that something I said might have uh, encouraged them to do that. So uh, I take my responsibility very seriously when it comes to this. Even if you rotoscoped a piece of animation a long time ago and uh, then you went on to become a professional, you left that all behind, you hadn't rotoscoped in years, someone could scroll back through your history on the internet, pull it up and use that as an attack on you and cause all kinds of trouble later on down the line. So even if it doesn't get noticed in the beginning, it could come back to haunt you later. I really worry that that could happen to someone and I want it to be so that if that does happen, it's not because of me. It's not because I encouraged them to rotoscope, it's because they went off and did it on their own. Nothing to do with me. I want to wipe my hands. I want to wash my hands at that. But yeah, going back to the video and what I said in the video, you know, one of the parts I talked about, the fact that I draw over Sakuga frames in my Sakuga studies videos um, with little arrows. Um, I don't, you, you'll be able to see in those videos, I don't rotoscope the animation. I draw little arrows over the frames to show the direction of movements to teach. And that's different from rotoscoping. I don't rotoscope those animations. So I used the wrong words there. I, I, drew, I drew over them. Even if you're some kind of experienced professional um, doing some kind of experimental morphing where you're really pulling and stretching and morphing the rotoscope and you're using as a source someone else's footage, you're still playing with fire. Like you are running a serious risk of copyright infringement. And so even if you're a seasoned professional, it's still not worth doing. Just don't bring it into your software in the beginning. Um, it's not worth the risk. I talked about, in theory, how you could start with someone else's animation, in theory. You could start with someone else's animation and transform it to be unrecognizable. The problem with that is that you are not in control of how recognizable you're able to make that transformation. Like, you could think, you could very easily think that you have made it unrecognizable, but you haven't. Someone manages to recognize it, and then you're in trouble. So, that doesn't work really because you're not in control of how recognizable you're able to distort something. The thing I was talking about in the video was purely theoretical, but in the real world, in practice, uh, rotoscoping someone else's animation is far too dangerous to try, to attempt. So please do not ever rotoscope other people's animations. Um, I've called people out in the past for it, and if I see you doing it, I will call you out too. So don't do it. All right, I hope we're crystal clear on that point, because I have been repeating that for this entire video. Uh, it's very important. 
So for the time being, I've removed the original video um, so that people don't make the mistake that I've been talking about. Um, it's pretty sad, really, because I, I put a lot of thought into that video. It's the responsible thing to do. My ongoing objective is to improve the entire art form of animation, to make it healthy, uh, creative and thriving. And it certainly wouldn't be good for the medium to have a bunch of kids running around rotoscoping their favourite Sakuga animators and getting into all kinds of trouble. My actual advice to beginner animators is uh, see if you can just not rotoscope at all. Like, even if it's your own footage, just uh, see if you can go without. Because rotoscoping is used as a shortcut a lot of the time. It's used to bypass serious gaps in the animator's knowledge, you know, instead of studying the foundations. So at this point in your learning, you shouldn't be trying to exploit shortcuts, really. That's not what you should be doing at this point. Instead, I would invite you to learn the fundamentals of animation, of the way things move. Learn it from the ground up. Learn how to draw from observation and learn how to draw from your imagination and animate from your imagination. It takes longer, but you won't have this problem of uh, needing a reference, like an over-reliance on the reference in order for you to make something. The main reason beginners use rotoscope is because they are frustrated that they are unable to create realistic visuals from observation. So instead they use rotoscope as a shortcut instead of putting in the work to learn the foundations of animation. I'm gonna say it one more time so that there's no misunderstanding potentially. I'm taking away all the nuance in my answer and just making it very simple. Don't rotoscope other people's animations. So I'm predicting that one of the questions I'm gonna get asked is, okay, you've said you can't rotoscope animation, but can you rotoscope footage, like video footage that doesn't belong to me? I'm gonna to have to say no to that as well. Like that footage belongs to someone else. And if you wanna rotoscope it, you need to ask their permission at the very least. And if they say no, then don't rotoscope it. You're not allowed, it's not your footage. If you really want to rotoscope something, go out with a camera, film it yourself, and you can rotoscope over that if you really want to. So I haven't decided whether to link the the original video um, but if I do decide to link it then it will be at the bottom of the description page so that way you'll only be able to find it if you've watched this full video first then you'll know where to find it uh, don't share the original video please with other people you can share this video first so that people have to go through this video first um, and yeah I'm sorry for the change in opinion uh, I've thought about it a little bit more now, and I think this is what's right for me to do. Um, have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>